I am the official historian at the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and my role is to ensure that everything the Commission does is grounded in its history and to help share that history with the wider public. The two theatres of war that are critical to the findings of this report are in East Africa and then across the Middle East and you know they are very much underrepresented in popular discussions about the war. People will know or may have visited Neuve Chapelle, the beautiful monument on the Western Front to, to pre-partition Indian forces, um, but they probably won't know that Indian forces make up, I think, three quarters of the manpower deployed to Mesopotamia during the war. Uh, they won't know that Indian units serve throughout East Africa. They won't know that upwards of a million men serve as carriers in East Africa. Um, and you know, this is a story that, that's written across that continent and, and across the Middle East. And it's just aspects of history that people tend not to engage with. Uh, and as you say, the, the key narrative of the empire at war really centers on Australia, New Zealand, Canada. It doesn't really stretch as far as, as some of these other more diverse contributions. So one, one of the biggest problems that the commission faces when it gets to, let's say, Africa, let's say East Africa, let's say Kenya and Tanzania, or what are now Kenya and Tanzania, is that the vast majority of these men were buried in what was referred to as the bush, um, and their graves simply weren't marked. And that is what then leaves us with this legacy of being unable to mark those graves. The report shows how difficult it was in the 1920s for the Commission to undertake its duties outside of Europe. It also shows examples of how the Commission failed to make that situation better. While the prevailing attitudes of the time and the situation on the ground played a role, we now know that the Commission itself was also complicit. Put simply, it supported and allowed decisions that went against its policy of equal commemoration. That was wrong then and it's wrong now, and that is why today the CWGC is apologising for the role it played in this complicated part of its history. We are at the beginning of a process here and we have taken the upper estimates and I would like to be sitting here in five years time and telling you that actually we think these numbers are much smaller. Um, but we can only go on the information we have at present and the truth is in these circumstances we may never know the final figures. What we feel we have a grasp of looking at material held within the Commission archives, within the Colonial Office archives, is policy and um, what we hope to find in archives held in, uh, in Kenya, in, in Tanzania, elsewhere are potentially names. Uh, and names is obviously an area in which we are at present lacking um, and it is hoped that if they don't survive here that they may survive overseas. I'm really proud of this report because fundamentally it is a search for names and that is how the Commission remembers. Critically, it's also an opportunity for us to reaffirm our principles and, importantly, our commitment to equality in death.